don't tell nobody. <laughs> I know you'd be like, Duana, what in the world are you doing? First off, why are you up this time of the morning? Shouldn't you be in bed asleep? And I'm with you on that. I, I really am. I'm with you on that. I really should be in the bed asleep. But it's, it's really hard to be in the bed asleep when your best friend is Holy Spirit. Because... <laughs> The Bible says that God never slumbers nor do he sleep. And so, when we're trying to be in bed sleep, God is wide open. He's watching over the whole earth. And so, sometimes when he's watching over the whole earth, he just might tap you on the shoulder and say, Hey, I'm up tonight. I need you to be up too. And so, this is like <laughs> one of them nights that God decides I can't go to sleep. So, I literally was getting in the bed. Just like some of you probably already are or you're just waking up in the morning and you're seeing this notification that um, Tawana posted a live video late last night. And so you're waking up from your slumber and sleep. Well, I was getting in the bed. I really was. Like I had my gown on <laughs> and everything. No intentions on doing a live. And then here I am. Um, just, I had to pop it up. This is like what I would consider a pop-up shop in the middle of the night, posting this live. And the title of this message is, Shh, Don't Tell Nobody. And you might be like, Duana, don't tell nobody what? Well, the night study is coming from two, two books in the Bible. We'll be coming from Genesis first. So just in case you want to go um, grab your Bible. We'll be coming from Genesis, the 37th chapter, and we'll read a few verses out of that. We're going to read from 3 down to 9. And then we're going to flip over, and we're going to go into the New Testament in the book of Matthew. And we're going to go over to the 17th chapter of Matthew. And we're going to read down from 1 to six and then i'm gonna pick up again at nine so just in case you you know want to write down these scriptures again is genesis from the old testament chapter 37 verses three through nine and then we're going to flip over to matthew chapter 17 and we're going to read verses da -da -da -da. i kind of flip my page um this is my page we're gonna read from. We're gonna read from Gen, I'm not, Matthew, Saint Matthew, the seventeenth chapter, one down to verse six, and then we're gonna pick up again in verse nine. And again, the title of this message is, "Shh, don't tell nobody." Let's go. Gotta put these spectacles on, y'all. Know how it is when you start getting older. You gotta be able to have some notes to <laughs> help you a little bit. So, anyway, Genesis chapter 20, chapter 37, verse 3. Now, Israel loved, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brothers saw that the father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you the dream I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about and made obeisance to my sheaf, which means kind of bow down. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Again, those stars was going to bow down. Let us go to the New Testament and we're going to go over to Matthew 17. Hello, Miss Mr. I'm at Miss Sherry. How you doing? Hello, Mr. Everett McDonald. Thank you for joining me. 
And again, we're going to be at Matthew 17. Let me stay focused. <laughs> Verses 1 through 6, and then we're going to pick up at 9. After, and after six days, Jesus and Pete, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John. Let me start that sentence again. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Eliza talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou will let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Eliza. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold, a voice out of the cloud. Which said, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, fear, I mean, excuse me, when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. I'm dropping down to nine. Nine says, and as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them saying, tell no bit, tell the vision to no man. Shh, don't tell nobody. He says, tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. I say again, shh, don't tell nobody. Let's go back to Genesis for a second. So just to give just a little briefness on Genesis. In this particular chapter, Joseph is one of the sons of Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons. This particular son, Joseph, was born in Jacob's old age. So, as the Bible states, Joseph loved him. I, I, There's a son born after him, and it doesn't show how much he loves them. And there's some sons shown, I meant born before him, and the Bible doesn't show how much he loves them. But Joseph, he loves him so much that he goes out and he makes, has made for Joseph this beautiful coat of many colors. I mean, this... This coat has to be fabulous because the sons, they look on Joseph after getting this coat and it just makes them even matter. And so um, they begin to hate Joseph for the fact that the dad loves him so much. So one night Joseph goes to sleep and he starts to dream these dreams. And in these dreams, he starts to see that he is going to be risen and lifted up above his brethren and even his dad and i think his his mother as well the brother don't like it he goes to bed again he dreams another dream and it's saying like at first i saw all my brother and sheaves laying down bowing before me but now for real for real the next dream the sun and the moon which represents the mother and the father are going to be bowing down like the whole family is going to be bowing down Joseph, at the time, doesn't have no ill will in his heart. He's just excited about the dream he just had. You, do you feel that? Do Have you had that experience before where you know that God has laid on your heart that he's getting ready to do something and you're so full of excitement that I got to tell somebody. I got, I got to call up my friends and I got to be like this, that, the third. Like I had this dream or God opened this door or I feel like God is getting ready to do this. So you go and you tell everybody. And once you start to tell them, you start to notice that like they kind of backing up off of you or all of a sudden they don't even want nothing to do with you or they start thinking that you think you all that. But it's not that you think you all that. You're just really excited about whatever it is that the Lord has laid on your heart or he's shown you or the doors that he's opening and you want others to be excited for you as well. This is where Joseph is. He's super excited about the things that God is showing him. And I'm going to tell my brothers who better than to tell your brothers, your brother and your the family who loves you. I want to tell them what I have just dreamed or what I have just heard of the Lord or this opportunity that is right here at my feet. I want to tell somebody this is where Joseph is. Joseph is at a point in his life where 
it just seems like God is getting ready to open up this amazingness. And I need to tell somebody about it. So he runs and he tells his dream. Well, the scriptures go on to show that after Joseph tells his dream, his demise is set up for him. His brothers hate him so much for the coat that his, the love that his daddy has shown him one, the coat that his daddy has made him two. And now we are all supposed to be in line for who God's chosen. And God gives you dreams that I have chosen you out of everybody else. These 12 brothers are up. Well, now it's 11 because Joseph, you know, taking away from the number makes 11. But these brothers are upset because Joseph is now clearly being handpicked by God that God is getting ready to do some great things for him. And they, they're like, look, mm-mm, mm-mm, because I'm the oldest. <laughs> and he not he not getting ready to get it over me. This is what one of his brothers is feeling, or another brother feeling like, who is he? He not as strong as I am, or he don't look as good as I am, or he ain't done the things that I'm doing. How in the world is he gonna be the one who receives the blessing that all of us are in line waiting for? So they set a plan in place. They start deciding like how we gonna get rid of him. So one day they're out working in the field and as they're out working in the field joseph comes along joseph doesn't have any ill will in mind he is just doing simply as his dad told him to do go take something out to your brothers and as he going out there to take him he realized like y'all like y'all y'all sitting around on the job what is y'all what is y'all really doing dad don't know that y'all out here cutting up like this but don't worry because i'm going i'm going back to tell him so he goes back and he lets his dad know like what some of the brothers is doing, but this is just, this is just fueling their fire or fueling their anger against them. So now he comes out and they decide like, we got to get rid of him. We got to get rid of him. So they see some people coming by and then they see a pit that's over. I don't know how far away it is from them, but they, they see a pit and Hey, this is a good place. It ain't no water in here. It's a dried up well. We can just throw them in this pit. Oh, and he wearing that coat too. Ooh, we got this. Like we're gonna take that coat off of him and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make this real good. We're gonna make dad think he really did. Like we really getting ready to kill him. We really getting ready to knock him off. And it's gonna look like we ain't had nothing to do with it. So they put Joseph down into this pit. They take his coat and they dip it in blood and they um, it's been torn up in strings by animals. So it looks like that what happened to Joseph, the son that the daddy Jacob loved so much has just been killed by some raven animals. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the child that you adore, the child that you got great hopes for? All of a sudden, somebody knocks on your door and says, somebody has brutally killed your child but you don't know that it's not true so you go through all of the grief because the son that you loved is gone but I think what's more horrific is that you're going through something that you would have never had to go through if the sons hadn't had so much hate in their heart They were not just, they didn't just have hate. Their hearts was cold. Can you imagine coming to your dad, your dad, who you love? How could you sit there and watch your dad cry tears? Have his heart broken, rent, torn in two to hear the loss of his son. And you sit there and you love your dad and feel nothing. You don't feel that you need to stop and tell him, that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we just... We, we was wrong, but we got mad at him, so we we act like we killed him. But we just put him in the pit. Now, if you want us to go back out there and get him, like, just let us know. They, they just, they, they stood there and hold their, they held their composure. And they told Joseph, I mean, they told Jacob that their son, that his son Joseph was dead. Some raven animals, wolves, bears, who knows what got him. But he's destroyed and here's his jacket left. That gift that you spent your hard-earned money to make sure that he knew who he was. 
you you went out and you bought the finest of a jacket for him, a coat that the Bible says was multicolored just for him. Here it is, mangled, filled with blood. And this is all that's left of your favorite son. Take that to the bank, why don't you? This is how that brother's, his son showed up. When they threw him in the pit, they didn't stop there. There were some traders going past, merchants going past in that time, and they sold him to the merchants. You might be like, okay, the one of where are we going this with this? So whenever God started showing me this scripture, I started to see a connection with what happened with Joseph and what happened with Jesus. So when I took you to um, Matthew 17 and I started showing you those verses and I read through them, what you see, I'm going to flip back to them just to kind of rehash that just a little bit. Um, 17, 17, 17, 17. Here, Jesus has invited three of his disciples up to the mountain to pray. Well, while they're up there on that mountain, the Bible says that Jesus transfigures. And transfigures in the Hebrew meant meta. I, I want to say it's meta. I don't want to say it wrong. Metamorpha metamorpha not like metamorphosis but it's the like that's where we get the word metamorphosis from metamorpha so he transfigures so it's almost like the process of a butterfly like he goes from this human being to this different thing and the only thing that i can liken it to is um if you remember the movie that um ah um i can't say his name I want to say Denzel, but it's not Denzel. Um, but um, eh, I see his face. I can't even think of the movie. But in the movie, things like go really slow. It's like... Right? And then all of a sudden, if... Oh, this is the thought. This is the thought that he gave to me. Um, you remember the movie Shrek, right? The, in the movie Shrek, Shrek's... Um, the other the, the female ver the female or is it or y'all i be watching these movies and then it come back to mind and i can only try to tell you how i get it but anyway the the one the little woman that he is with she is a i think it's an old too but she's the same thing he is she is the same species as he is right but she falls asleep how i don't really know all of that in the story god jesus why am i doing this but <laughs> at any rate she's woken up by shrek but i think the kiss makes her come alive right but then there's a part in the movie where she goes from being one species to human are you with me she goes from being this thing that's green with these little ears sticking out with orange hair to now being fully Dewana. Right? I, I hate to say that because y'all never mind. I ain't even gonna tell you. But anyway, let me get going. So with that being said, um this is what happens to Jesus. Jesus transfigures and he becomes like this bright shining the Bible says that his his garment, whenever he transfigures, is whiter than any fuller's snow, fuller's soap on earth can make it. Can you imagine that? Like like it's hard to imagine that there is like uh, uh, the other day I had on a white dress and I got a stain in it, right? And is I don't know right now what I'm going to use to be able to get that stain out. But here the Bible says that Jesus becomes so white, he's become his 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 garment has become so white and it was so white more white than any fuller so absolutely on the whole entire being of the earth could make it it's like wow like man can't even come up with nothing that would have made jesus's garment so white but not only that the bible says that his face changed so when i think of stuff like that it's like 
I'm looking at the Bible like, wow, God. You know, like, wow. I don't even know another way to say it, but you see scriptures that make you see things that only God could cause to happen. How could a man, I wish I had a zipper, but how could a man go from fully human, right? To all of a sudden, like somebody unzips humanity off of him and he becomes completely spirit. Are you with me? Like, I don't want to be confusing you, but when I see things like this in the Bible, it makes me stop, right? But then when all of this happens, Jesus tells the disciples in verse 9, he says, Tell the vision to no man. Shh. Don't tell nobody. He might be like, okay. So why he didn't want anybody to know? Because Jesus is now, y'all, I'm having a hot one. And when I have them, I didn't bring my fan in here. So like the realty of me shining and glistening is because I'm having that hot one. <laughs> y'all pray for you, girl, right now. But anyway, he tells them to tell no one. Right? So you got to know, now watch this. If he's telling them to tell no one and they're going back down the mountain, what happened? What happened between him saying, don't tell no one and then walking back down this mountain? Because up here on this mountaintop, he's transfigured before their eyes. Is is this brightness that they have never seen before so much is going on they don't only see the brightness but a cloud covers and hovers over jesus and the bible says that god says to the disciples this is my beloved son hear him right so now they're hearing the very voice of god they're seeing god completely change jesus from humanity unzip that humanity suit off and he is completely spirit before them almost translucent spirit metamorphosis almost like when you think of a caterpillar you know how the the, the um the wings of them like become like translucent as they're caning their their colors and as the wing as the caterpillar is going from caterpillar to now a beautiful butterfly in this chrysalis right But they're here on this mountaintop and they're getting ready to come down. But when they're coming down, the Bible doesn't show what happens between them. But you got to know, you, sometimes you got to read between the lines because something happened. And you're like, what do you mean something happened? He said, tell no one the vision, right? But they kept coming down the mountain and everybody they come in contact with, no, they didn't see Jesus, the transfigured Jesus. The transfigured Jesus didn't come off of the mountain. Like, it not come off the mountain. It did, he didn't stay on the mountain. He came down the mountain with the disciples. So if he tells the disciples, don't tell no one, Jesus himself no longer looks like he just did a few minutes ago. It's like just as quick as he transfigured, he zipped back up that suit. And he walked down and he looked just as the, the same Jesus that he had looked like before. You, you, the one of where you're going with this. I know. I'm trying to make this make sense because sometimes I get really super excited. The reason why Jesus doesn't want the disciples to tell anyone is because if they tell the Pharisees and Sadducees and all these people, they will stop or I, I, I don't know if I should say stop, but I will most definitely say try to hinder. See, as long as they don't understand that he really is the son of God, because all this time they've been arguing. He is not the son of God. He just lying. He committing. I don't know if it's called treason, but he is like, because he's coming against Rome and he's saying things against God. He's, bla he's a blasphemer. This is why they say kill him, like, like crucify him, because you can't do this. You can't say that you're the son of God. You were born of a man. This is the way they're talking about Jesus. 
But on this mountain where he transfigures, he really now shows the disciples, the three, because it's not the whole 12 at this time. He, cho he shows the three that I am truly the son of God. Y'all see this, but you got to shh. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody this vision that you just saw. Jesus even, it's funny that he chooses, the Bible chooses the word vision because vision is like something that you plan to do, right? Futuristically. It's like not something that is actually happening right in the moment. It's something that we cast out like we do what we call our vision boards because that's something that we see futuristically. But they didn't see Jesus transfigured futuristically. They seen him in their now transfigured. But Jesus said, tell no one the vision that you just saw. And the reason why he's saying tell no one is because I don't want nothing to stop the fact that I am getting ready to go to the cross for, let me, let me make this personal. I don't want nobody to stop the fact that I am getting ready to go to the cross for Sherry Nicole here. I don't want nobody to stop that I'm, nobody to stop that I'm getting ready to go to the cross for Everett McDonald. I don't want nobody to stand in the way of me going to the cross for Elaine KG. That is Betty Witted James over there. I am going to save her life. Nobody is going to stop me dying on the cross. Because if I don't die on the cross, Sherry Nicole Hare can't make it in. Everett, Mc Everett McDonald can't make it in. Elaine KG can't make it in. Betty James Whitted can't make it in. Nobody is going to stop Dewana Whitted from coming to the cross. Nobody is going to stop her. Okay, okay. I'm getting excited. I'm trying. Got it. Calm down. Right. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. Here, God is saying, Jesus is saying, I will not let nothing separate my ch God's children from his love. I will not let nothing stand in, in between God's children and his love. Nothing is going to come between that. I got to go to the cross. So because I got to go to the cross, I need to die. Some years ago, I went and watched the movie Passion of Christ when it first came out. And I remember being in that, me and my husband, my mom and my dad, and um, a few others had went to watch the movie. I think some people from my church had went to watch the movie when it first came out. And literally, as we sat there in that movie theater, all you could hear was people weeping as they beat Jesus. As the, as the Bible says, the thorn of the, the thorn, the crown of thorns was mashed upon his head. Like I, it, like I know that it's hard for us to see, but that they had braided some thorny thistles and they mashed those things onto his head and blood came down his face. It's hard for us to see that they used what was called back in those times a cat of nine tails. And it was this big, big metal ball that had spikes on it. And then it had a chain hanging from it. So when we see pictures of um, like whenever they was uh, beating slaves and they was using the whip, they weren't using the whip on Jesus. They were using a cat of nine tails and it had spikes coming from it. And it was metal so that when it hit him, it not only hit him and bruised them and hurt him but when it when it when it hit it would actually stick into his flesh and when they snatched it off can you imagine you see it now like it was snatching his skin his sinews off the bible says over in um let me, let me make sure i say this right because i don't want to lie um what scripture is coming from holy spirit which one is it i wasn't planning to pull that one lord so you got to take me to it. I think it's in Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah. Uh, I'm in Isaiah, y'all. Give me just a second. Well, which one is it? Which one is it? Hold on, y'all. Give me just a second because I wasn't. Yeah, I, I flipped to it and passed it. Anyway. 
I want to go to this scripture in Isaiah, and I'm at Isaiah 52, and I'm going to talk about verses 13 through, just just let me read, and give, just give me a second to the read. It says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. And then it says in verse 14, And as many astonished at thee, his visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of man. So even when you think of collectively all of the beatings and bruises, the Bible says that the beating and bruising that Jesus took was way more than any of the sons of men it was his visage was marred more than any man like when you start looking up some of the words and definition it's like the meat was so torn like it was all the way to the bone like you could look at jesus and see bone as they beat him and they bruised him and so Will y'all be mad at me if I run out of scene? I got to go get my remote control to show y'all this. Will y'all hold with me right quick? I got to get my remote control to show y'all this. Hold on. Let me get my remote control. You know, I'm still dealing with my back. Y'all pray for me. So, hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, I'm back. I'm coming back, right? Thank y'all for your patience. I greatly appreciate you. So this is my one of my remote shows, right? I want you to see this. So my daughter went out and got me this some time ago because we keep, like, can't find a remote show. So she buys me this little doohickey right here, right? It's this little doohickey. And so what happens is that in the dark, this glows, right? So we can find a remote. <laughs> in the dark, you can't find it. But it just slips over my remote like so, just a slip on. Right, like so. And covers my remote and helps us find it. And you like to wanna, why did you go get this remote? What's the purpose of this? Because I want you to see that I'm so excited about this message. I gotta calm down. This is Jesus. Okay, y'all see this? I know. I'm using a bad example to represent the son of a king. But just roll with me for a second. This is Jesus. This is the flesh. Jesus was just on the mountain. He's transfigured. But when he comes back down the mountain, because he don't want nobody to know, he got to slip back into the flesh. Y'all see that? On the mountain, this is Jesus. He's in his realness of who he is. He is the son of God and he's shining brightly on the mountain. But I got to come back down to the people who ain't ready. Not just ain't ready, but who don't need to stop. Who don't need to stand in the way of me going to the cross. Because, okay, so when we go back to this scripture in Matthew, Matthew 17, the first, the first through about the sixth verse, you will see he's talking with somebody. He's talking with Moses and Elijah. But they're actually having a conversation. You know what they're talking about? They are talking about that Jesus is getting ready to die on the cross. Now, if God, now y'all, y'all, y'all watch this. If God almighty is coming down to the earth to let Moses and Elias come from heaven to have a conversation with Jesus. Don't you know in that moment, God can beam me up Scotty to, he can beam me up Jesus to heaven, beam me up Scotty to heaven. And he won't ever have to go to the cross. He don't ever have to die. God could have did that in that moment. But God's whole plan for humanity was for his son to go to the cross. Because it was the only way that he could redeem the life of humanity. Jesus got to go to the cross. Jesus is cool with going to the cross. He's already been taught. He literally stands there with Moses and Elijah and gets all of the strategy. He gets all of the information necessary for him to prepare himself to go to a cross. He gets, 
in in the military, it's like I, I can't think of how it, it like flashed in my head and stopped. But it, it, he's been briefed. He's been briefed about the assignment that God has on his life. So he's not confused with it, but I just need some things in place. Okay, I let y'all come up here and see this, that I transfigured, and I let you see that I'm going back into the suit. I'm slipping right back into the suit, right before your eyes. So he slips back into the suit right before their eyes, walks down the mountain with him. Now everybody that had seen Jesus before them, he looks the same to them. Because he has back on his earthly suit. But it's, it's, I don't know exactly the time, so I don't want to say like it's days, minutes, weeks. But it's right before this transfiguration happens, right before Jesus is to go to the cross. So Jesus tells the disciples, you see me transfigure. You know for sure, for you know down in your sha na na na. You know for your own self, like it's so deep within you because you saw me transfigure. You know that I'm the Son of God. But shh, don't tell nobody the vision that you saw. Don't tell them, because if you tell them, then you mess up my plan. You mess up my plan to redeem humanity don't tell them how do you mess up the plan because now i heard this a long time ago um that the air holds that the air holds no secrets so i was like whoa that was interesting i never thought about the air hold no secrets like even today we send the messages through airwaves <laughs> How many secrets is it really holding? When it goes through the airwaves, who else can hear it? I'm not in your home. I'm on a phone. And look at all of the people who can hear this message. So, the air hold no secrets. There's a scripture in the Bible that says that Satan is the prince of the air. Satan is the prince of the air. So when they see this, they are told, shh, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody because I don't want to give Satan nothing to try to stand in the way of this. Nothing. This is God's plan. I ain't telling nobody. So Jesus goes to the cross. He's beat. I'm going to go back with Isaiah for this. I'm going to let Isaiah tell this account. Because I wasn't there to see it. Y'all here going crazy. But the Bible says. That according to Isaiah. Verse. Uh, chapter 53 verse 5. But he was wounded. For our. Transgressions. He didn't say my. Isaiah didn't just say he was wounded just for my. He said he was wounded for our transgressions. He said he was bruised for our iniquities. And get this. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. I need you to really get this. The chastisement, every stripe that he bore was for Phyllis Simpson's redemption. Every stripe that he bore was for Betty James's redemption. Every stripe that he bore was for Elaine KG. Every stripe that he bore was for Everett McDonald. And if I don't see your name and don't call your name, I'm sorry, the screen only shows me so much. But just know that when he says he was wounded for our, I need you to plug your name in. So I'm going to say it again. He was wounded, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Put your name there. But he was bruised for our iniquities. Put your name there. The chastisement of our peace, put your name there, was upon him. And by his stripes, we, put your name there, are healed. Everything he did was for us. It's me. For you. For us. 
everything he did. So I don't need y'all that are watching this, standing by watching this, to go run your mouth and go tell people before God's plan full out comes to fruition. He said, matter of fact, don't even tell nobody until you see me risen from the dead. Don't tell nobody until you see me risen. He did it all for us. That's something to think about, ain't it? Right? Like I don't I don't know if you've ever heard it like that or ever heard it how I put it. But it was a plan in place. So I want you to see something. Y'all love. I really do love the word of God. And I love God. Because without God, I, I don't understand or don't comprehend. And the word doesn't make sense to me. But God is so amazing that he does. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but he gives us. Let me say it like this. He gives us all the tools necessary. You know how you have you ever heard somebody say, I read the Bible. I don't understand that. That this is and thou's girl. I can't. <laughs> I don't understand that. I hear a lot of people say that. And I think that they are absolutely 100% telling the truth. Yet, at the same token, I love it. And I don't love other versions of it. I love actually the King James version of it. Even though there are times that I open it up and it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but the reason why I do is because... He's put so many things in place. And I'm not, and I know that you may think it, yeah, the one, there's other resources. Like we could get concordances and we can get dictionaries and we can get maps and we can get all this other stuff to help us understand. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm not, I'm not talking about going to the store and spending any money. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you a scripture, show you a, tell you another scripture, and he's going to have to help me find it because I don't have, I don't even know if I have this one marked. Um, I think I know about by heart, but I know that I might mess it up. And if I don't find it in my lippy, and I don't know if exactly where it's at I think it's in Isaiah but I'm going to tell you the scripture it says he who is hungry come come without money he who is thirsty come come without money so what I'm telling you about is not asking you to go to the store and buy another resource that's not what I'm asking you I'm not asking you the first thing that I'm asking you to do is to hear this, these scriptures that I'm telling you about because it's not just a good story. Like it is so powerful that once you believe, once you hear this, there's a resignation that it does within you that you're like, wow, I didn't really know it like that. That's, that's good. I didn't really see it like that. That's that's interesting. Wow. He did that for me. Yes. Yeah. When, when Jesus went to that cross, he didn't just do it for the people of that time. He did it for humanity, even, even the children that are yet to come. He did it for humanity, period, point blank. So anytime you hear the story that he was wounded for my transgressions, you got to know he was talking about you. It says our, I say my, but he's talking about us. That's why I say my, because I make it personal. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chest has, okay, Holy Spirit said, tell you this, I got to tell you this. You're thinking right now, but Dewana, what have I done wrong? Good question. Great question. Great question. Great question. Great question. Great question. You're saying, I didn't sin. I don't lie. I don't steal. 
I don't cheat on my wife. I don't cheat on my husband. So I haven't committed adultery. I'm not worshiping idol gods. I don't have statues in my house that I'm bowing down to. So, Dewana, what are you talking about? I have not sinned. I haven't. I try to love people and I try to treat people right. You, you can give me a heart if you agree with that. You know how we are. We're like, I didn't do nothing wrong. I had clean. How you going to call me a sinner? Remember earlier, I said that scripture. That it, he said he'll let nothing separate, right? I want you to understand that the Bible says, I don't have the scripture before me, but the Bible says, all have sinned and fell short of God's glory. Why? Why? Because the Bible says that the day that you were popped out of your mama's womb, you came into an earth that was sinful. The Bible says that we were born in sin and shaped in the world's iniquity. That's why you can look at a little kid and they'll lie and you go, what in the world they get that from? You ain't taught them no lie. How you, how you cussing? But you better shut your mouth. But you, we don't do this in this house. But he picks it up. Why? Because the world that we in is sinful. And the very time that anybody is popped into this earth, we're popped into an earth that is full of sin and iniquity. So we have no other choice but to be sinners. Why? Because over in Genesis, in the first book of the Bible, Adam and Eve, not the first book, the third chapter of the Bible of Genesis, the Adam and Eve sin. They eat of the forbidden fruit. Eve convinces her husband, Adam, to eat. He partakes it. And now, because they're the first two that God has used to create humanity, because their last name really is Sinners, like, because the Bible don't give them no last name, but if Dewana could give them one, their name is Adam Sinners and Eve Sinners, and every child they have thereafter becomes a sinner. The earth was populated by those two. And everything that came out of that genealogy is a sinner because of the sin of Adam and Eve. But the God doesn't stop there. A lot of people don't know. There's a lot that do, but there's a lot that don't. That whenever God told Adam that if he ate of the fruit that he would surely die, God wasn't talking about a physical death because the Bible shows that Adam lived a long time after that. He lived a long time. So it would almost seem like that's contradictory guy. If you said he was going to die, why ain't he die? God was not talking about a physical death. He was talking about a spiritual death. So before this disruption in the garden, Adam and Eve were able to talk. The Bible says they were able to talk with God in the cool of the day. Meaning, excuse me, that they were able to have communication back and forth with God. They were able to pick his brain and know what he wanted them to do for the day. Which direction do I go in? Um, how many children did you say you want us to have? Lord, what do we plant in this? Not what do we plant? How do we cook? No, no. Better yet, let me, let me, let me go back. Let me make it real plain. Adam had to name all of the animals. What well, God, what do you think that name should be? Y'all y'all know that y'all heard some animals' names. He'd be like, hmm, I, I they come up with ele elephant for this big thing. I don't know what I would have called it. I really <laughs> have no idea. A little me is a little ant. Would you have came up with a name ant? I don't know. I don't know. If God had to said, do want to get out there and call everything, give them a name, and whatever you name it, that, that is what it will be. But Adam is able to communicate with God who created this all. He's not in this by himself. He's not in this garden by himself. So the day that he does it, he dies a spiritual death. And what does that mean to you and I? Now there becomes a separation between Adam and his communication to God. I would liken it as this. Y'all know how on our cell phone sometimes we call somebody calls us or somebody we call somebody and we're talking and we're like, girl, da, 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 and girl, yeah, and the, girl, you should have seen them. And, da, da, da. and have you ever looked at your phone and been like, but they're gone. <laughs> Ain't nobody on this phone because the call dropped. 
And you have you have to come back like, girl, girl, I was just talking to you. Y'all know y'all did it. God do it all the time. That phone, that signal will drop. And the next thing I know, it's gone. There's nobody there. I'm talking, but there's nobody listening. But not only is nobody listening, nobody is responding to what I'm saying. The call is dropped. The call is dropped. The relationship Adam and God shared has now dropped. You see it? So when Jesus does all of this, he does all of this on the cross. And I can fully and honestly say with every bit of my fiber and being that I can call out your names and says, say he did it for you because he did. Because his greatest desire was to be back in communication. I know y'all not tired of me calling y'all names and I'm tired of looking through these glasses that look like it got fog in them because my hair stuff, whatever is on it in my hair is on my glasses. Anyway. He wanted to be back in communication with Everett McDonald. He wanted to be back in communication with Elaine KG. He wanted to be back in communication with Betty James Whitted. Whitted James, sorry for that. He wanted to be back in communication with Phyllis Simpson. He wanted to be able to talk with you in the cool of the day. Phyllis, Phyllis, he wanted to be able to say, don't go into work today. I got somewhere else I need you to go. He wanted to be able to talk to you. He wanted to be able to say, Betty James, I need you to go in there and bake a cake today. You don't know it, but if you bake this cake, there's he, he might not even tell you that there's somebody coming. He may say, go in there and bake, uh, a ra say, a raisin pound cake. He say, Betty James, go in there and bake a, 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 a raisin pound cake. Or Betty, he may say, Betty James, go in there and make a, um, a, a nice pan of creamy, cheesy macaroni and cheese. And you bake it. And then the next thing you know, you're you're sitting at the house and you're you done ate it, and the the house has this 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 aroma of baked macaroni and cheese flowing through it. And the next thing you know, somebody comes to the house and they say, "Girl, I have been wanting be some macaroni and cheese. Girl, can let, let me get a little bit of that." But what you don't realize is that God done laid on your heart to bake it because there's somebody else in need of it. Elaine KG. He may say, I want you to start working on this project. And you say, I don't know how. I don't see how. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And the next thing you know, you just decide to start working on it with the best of your ability. And the next thing you know, somebody comes along and says, girl, I got everything you need to help you with that. I can do that. And you're like, really? He wants to be back in communication to us. So that now humanity can operate the way God intended. But we can't operate the way God intended if the call has been dropped. Because we can't hear him. We don't know which direction to go. We don't know whether we're at intersections in our life and we don't know whether we should go right, backward, forward or left. Because the God of the universe wants to speak to us so that he can tell us which way to go, what to do next, how to handle life's chaotic situations, how to pray when life seems so hard, how to love when it seems like it's hard to love the people that are standing in front of you. God wants to tell you, but he can't tell you if there's no communication. You... He hello? He hello? What's wrong with this doggone he Mash no buttons. I didn't miss nothing. I was just talking and all of a sudden the phone is dropped. That's what happened in the garden. The call was dropped because their disobedience caused the call to drop. So from Genesis all the way to Malachi until you get to the New Testament, the call was dropped. God was be, he was building a way that he could he could now be back in the communion that he loves so much with his people humanity man woman boy child young old God desired to be back in relationship and fellowship with you 
when you was hurting, he wanted you to be able to crawl into his lap and let him dry away your tears. The Bible says that when you cry, he what he not just wipes it away. The Bible says he bottles up like your tears are so precious to God that he literally holds up a bottle up under your chin and he catches every one as they fall. And the residue thereof, the Bible says that he tries away. He wanted to be back in fellowship with every single person on earth. That includes you. So now when you hear the scriptures, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement of my peace was upon him. I don't want you to do like we have done or like we did when we was watching the movie, The Passion of the Christ. I don't want you to sit in a room and cry because of all of the sufferings that Jesus went through. I think that it's great to honor and to, to be appreciative of the things he done. But I need you to understand something. He shows us something. That moments before his death, he transfigured. And moments before he walked off that mountain, moments before his death, he transfigured. And moments before he walked off that mountain, he put back on humanity. He put it back on. He put it back on. Jesus. I can't tell you that Jesus didn't feel some stuff being wrapped in human flesh. But he was fully spirit, so. Even when he got wounded, he could still say, forgive them, God, because they know not what they're doing. What they don't understand was that he was doing all of this to be back in relationship. He no longer wanted it to be where in order for you to hear him in the middle of the night, you had to call up Dewana first to hear from him. He wanted it to be 911. You could just lay in the bed and roll over when you had a, a trouble. When you had an ache in your knee, when you had a pain in your side, when you had a call in the middle of the night that said, oh, something is happening. Y'all got to come now. He wanted you to be able to roll over and say, before you run to that event, to be, before you run to that situation, the circumstance, before you grab that pain and nurse it with some Advil, Tylenol, BC, Motrin, whatever your pain source has been. He wanted you to be able to roll over and say, Father. Because you're now in relationship. You can call him up and say, God, I got this pain. I don't know what to do about it. Tell me what to do, Father. And he could tell you in that moment what you need to do. He might lay it on your heart to go to the scripture. The scripture, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, if there's any sick among you, the Bible says to, for them to come to the elders of the church and let them elders pray for them anointing them with oil and the bible says that that sick would recover he said but if they had any sins let them confess of their sins their sins would be forgiven and their body would be healed did you know that it didn't just he wants to be in communication so he can help you understand the book that is called the bible that's held with so many treasures that we are be, we are we are supposed to behold but we can't do that if we're not in fellowship and relationship back with him. Connected back. We would never be able to do it had Jesus not died on the cross. We would have never been able to do it. So he's holding disciples. Shh. Don't you tell nobody what you say. Because I don't need nothing to stand in the way of me giving my life for you. For you. And you, and you, and you, and everybody that comes after us, and all of our children, all of our nieces and nephews, all of our sisters and brothers, our mothers and our fathers, our cousins and our friends, even our enemies. He wanted nothing to be able to stand in the way of him dying for you. Let that resonate for a moment. Think about that for a moment. He didn't want nothing to stand in that gap. He didn't want nothing to stand in the way. Because the Bible says in John 3 and 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
that whom shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So all of this story is because God loved you. All this happened in the Bible because God loved you. Think about that for a moment. Many of you will hear this message. And I don't know where you at. I don't know where you at. I, I, where you at? <laughs> like, I see your name, but I don't, know where you at. I don't know what part of the world you in. I don't know whether you're two minutes from me. I don't know whether you're 30 minutes from me. I don't, y'all hear my voice? <laughs> Satan is a lie. He don't want me to tell y'all this. So my boy, I ain't had no problem. Well, my throat bothered me a little bit earlier today, but I ain't had, y'all, when I came on here, I ain't had no problem with my voice. Look at that. But he a lie. Because he don't want you to hear this. He don't want me to tell you this. He wants your ears to keep being clogged so you won't know the reason then for why Jesus died on the cross. Because God so loved you. So loved you. He wants you to know why he told the disciples, shh, don't you tell no one. Because he didn't want nothing, not, nothing else, no longer standing in between you and him. He didn't want nothing else standing in the way of your relationship. He says, I love them so much. I want to talk to them. I want to talk to them. I want to hear their voice. I want them to tell me what's going on with their life. I want them to tell me their hurts. I want them to tell me their pains. I want them to tell me their misunderstandings. I get to tell God everything. Last night, I was getting ready to wash my hair. And I was in a place that I didn't take my stuff to shampoo my hair. So I had to tell my daughter to come where I am, help me out with this situation. I'm in my hair stuff, all of that. That being said, because I, I wasn't planning to do my hair. <laughs> I was a mess, but God needed me to go to church last night. And my hair was like every which way, north, south, east, and west, but loose, like, because I haven't been doing my hair while I've been out um, on leave for right now. Because, long story, so those that know, know, but I've been out, right? And so I haven't been focusing on doing my hair because it's been, it's, the struggle in the streets has been for real. <laughs> I don't want to get sidetracked on that. So I thought in the moment, text my daughter and tell her to bring my um, brush and comb when she comes. And I texted her, my daughter said, okay. So she brought the brush and comb. No, she didn't. She, br she comes and she brings everything else for my hair, but she forgets the brush and comb. And she says, mom, what do you want me to do? I said, look at my head. <laughs> like, you know, you have to go back and get my brush and comb. So she left and she went back, got the brush and comb. Today, probably a few hours ago, me and my baby daughter was sitting on the bed talking. And she said, mom, let me tell you how good God is. I said, okay. I'm listening because I y'all don't understand. When my children start talking about the Lord, my ears perk up. I'm like, what you got to say, Lord? Because he give them stuff, man. He be giving them nuggets. I be like, Jesus. <laughs> God be talking to him. So I perked up, right? And she said, do you know, last night, I didn't know that you had text and said, sent a list of the things that you needed. So I didn't know. I just know I was in my room and I kept feeling to grab my brush. And I said, no, cause I don't, have, mama don't have the shampoo that she, the shampoo, that is needed for her particular hair. So I can't get my hair done. So there's no need for me to take the brush. She said, I passed by it and I heard, okay, so I don't want to be, I don't want to be elusive, but it's like, it's like, you hear him. This, I just, that's all I know to tell you is that you hear him. And he says to her, he whispers again, like whispers. Get your brush and your rat took home. And she didn't think nothing about it. So she leaves with my daughter and they get to where I am and neither one of them have to comb my brush. So they have to come back home. She just tells me just a while ago. She said, Mom, 
I didn't listen, but God told me to get the brush. She said, I don't get excited about the fact, the fact that I didn't listen. I get excited for the fact that he was talking to me. <laughs> but not only that he was talking to me, but that she could hear him. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to hear him. He wants you to hear him, Everett. He wants you to hear me, Lane KG. He wants you to hear him, Betty James. Phyllis, he wants you to hear him. He wants you to hear him. So he put all this in place so that he can be back in fellowship with you and I and everybody in the world. Oh, Lord. Show me to him next. So when Jesus comes down and he suffers everything on that cross, he dies. Pierced in the side. They're making sure he did on this cross. But the funny thing is that when he dies, The Bible says that they pierced him in the side while he was on the cross. On the cross, so they took this metal piece with a sharp point on it and they poked it in him. If you took a metal piece and poked it in me, what you would see come out was blood. Right? Y'all, y'all got to hear this. When they poked it in the side, the Bible said that it was blood and water that came out. What are you saying, Dewana? If you go back to Genesis, the very, let me, I want to read it to you, okay? I know y'all be like, she keep reading. <laughs> Can't get this glass on. Okay. In the beginning, God, cre I'm at Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. If you search through Scripture, almost, y'all, I'm having another one. <laughs> Jeez, these hot places ain't no joke. But anyway, if you search through Scripture, what you will find is that Spirit, His Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, a representation of Holy Spirit can always be found near some water, bodies of water. They pierce them in the side. Blood trickles out and water. Why? Because Jesus that is nailed to the cross is fully spirit covered in a flesh body. The, the suit, if you will. This, this thing here. That was the flesh. But he was fully spirit. See, this doesn't cover everything. The remote control is bigger than the package. The remote control, the remote control is bigger and thicker than the package. It doesn't fully, the remote control is bigger than the package. The Holy Spirit within him was bigger than the package that was hung on the cross. So though, they hung him on the cross and then allowed his body to be taken off of that cross and buried in a, in a tomb. When Mary and Magdalene, I know, I, I don't know why I'm going here. I didn't search all these scriptures. If I say something wrong, please forgive me. So he's, he's allowing me to share this with you. So if I go off and I, and I, um, I missed something in the scripture. Please forgive me. Charge it to my head and not to my heart because I didn't pull all this in because I didn't know I was going to tell all this. But when they went to the tomb to try to find him, to try to find the Savior that they had believed in, the Jesus that had walked with them, the Bible says that his body was gone. The garments that they had put on him to be hung on the cross was folded up. He ain't need that mess. That was the world stuff. He was fully spirit. Why? 
Because when they put him in that tomb, they put a transfigured Jesus in the tomb. Okay, okay. Think about this. I just went and got me a watermelon today, right? When I was standing at the counter, the woman said, what kind of watermelon did you get? Did you get a seedless watermelon, watermelon or did you get one without seeds? And I started having a fit. I mean, I didn't go off. I was just like, ah, man, I meant to get the one with the seeds in it. But I do believe I got the one that was seedless because I wanted the ones with seeds in it. Why? Because seeds has always been a representation of life. Right. So if you take life and put it in some dirt, if you put a seed and it dies and it falls in some dirt and you cover it up and you put a little water on that. Eventually, I'll have me a watermelon patch from that one seed. I have me a vine that has enough to produce me some watermelons. So you take the spirit that is fully engulfed, that is fully in Jesus operating. And you think you're fully dead on the cross. You think you done done the thing. You think you done killed it. But you didn't. Because you couldn't kill the spirit. You couldn't kill the Holy Ghost. He was full of it. You can't kill it. You can kill the flesh. But you can't touch the spirit. So when they put him in that tomb. The same way he transfigured. He did. Remember, I'm just, this is like fresh off the press. Remember, I told you he was wrapped in it. Ain't it ironic that when the tomb, when the when they looked in and they seen that he was gone? Jesus is so amazing, y'all. As representation of this flesh, the Bible says that it was folded up. Nicely folded right there, sitting on Whatever they laid him on. The clothes that he took off is a representation that he just took off the flesh that y'all thought y'all killed him in. So as soon as Jesus ascends, he goes back to the Father. And the Bible says that today, that Jesus is still living. He's seated on the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. He's inter interceding me to pray. He's praying to the Father on our behalf. Or if I could show it to you another way, it's like if you was to go get it, um, if you was to go downtown in the, in the speed limit is 35 and you come down there going 90 miles per hour, um, the police pulls you over and give you a ticket, you are most definitely going to court. You got a court date. Matter of fact, they're going to give it to you right there. You got a court date. You get in court and you decide, I ain't going to bring me no defense when I come in here. Oh, you in trouble. You better ask somebody to defend your case. Get you off of that. Or either your insurance going to go up and you're going to have a hefty fine. Choose which one you want. Jesus is... is The humanity defended. And he's talking to the judge on your behalf. And he's saying, don't let nothing happen to them. neither one of them. They're going to listen to Dewana live one day. Because Dewana going to spend some time in her word again. And I'm going to give her something that is going to make her mind be like, that she ain't going to be able to go to, night, go to bed one night. So she's going to be, she's going to get up. She's going to try to go to bed and she's going to realize that she can't because she needs to get up and she got to tell this to somebody. She going to question like, Lord, you feel what I'm telling her? Like, I don't know all of the ins and outs. I didn't study it real hard, God. But she knows that if she opened her mouth, I'll speak for her. And when she opens her mouth to speak, there's going to be, Betty James is going to listen. Phyllis is going to listen. Everett is going to be on. Sherry Hare going to be on. He knows Elaine KG going to stop what she's doing and she's going to start listening. So, Father, I'm interceding. I want you to let them hear this message. And some way, somehow, I didn't call neither one of y'all. 
I just went through my phone quickly and just tapped a few names. I didn't tap everybody because I get tired of that. Like, I don't, I, I, I can't go through all. I ain't got a whole lot of followers, but the ones that I do got, I did, like, there's too many to go. <laughs> so I just tap some, tap some, tap some. And I don't know who I will tap because I don't look at it. I just be like, okay, I tap some. I got some in there. That's, that's enough. It might be, it might be 20, it might be 50, it might be 40. I don't know. I, mean, I don't care on it. I just do it. And then all of a sudden, out of that, he pulls your heart to stop and listen to what I have to say. I have been, wait a minute, I can't see it. I don't know if I can see it. I can't see it right now. But y'all know I've been on this live for a good minute. Listening. To how much he loved you. I didn't plan to do this tonight. I didn't. Honest to goodness. I came, <laughs> I came in this house and put my pajamas on. Sat in the bed and talked with my kids. Ate me a bowl of watermelon. And I was getting ready to call it a night. I said, oh, that book I need to read for a little bit. I grabbed this book and I grabbed it in my hand, got ready to read it. And all of a sudden, I grabbed my cell phone. And when I grabbed my cell phone, the thought came to, to look at a message that I had put out a while ago. And I just looked at it. And when I looked at it, instantly I knew that I needed to come do a taping. And I'm like, like I didn't plan for this. He says, you good. You did your hair yesterday. Okay. I'll go. And here I am. He loves you. Jesus is interceding on your behalf. For some of you, it is to give your life to him. For some of you, when I say give your life, he, there's the call is, hello, hello, this, this is Jesus. And he, you're not on the line. Because there's something blocking the reception. He's telling you to come to him. But there's a block in the reception. And it's called something simple as sin. But it ain't that you lied, you cussed, you stealed, you, you slept with somebody else's husband. You, you could have done all that and more. But that's not it. It is the fact that Adam and Eve ate in that garden and they, because of their sin, it separated you from God. It dropped the call. So, so in, in, in whatever year you was born, you wouldn't be able to hear him because when Adam and Eve sinned way back over 2000 years, I don't know how long it goes. Let me stop saying numbers, but over so long ago. When you came along, you couldn't hear him because the call had been dropped way before it got to you. It had been dropped way before it got to you. When Adam and Eve did it, the call dropped and caused humanity backwards or forwards to not be able to be in communion, to be on a call sitting in the middle of the night. Yeah, God. Yeah, I told that girl to come home last night, but she, she won't listen to me, Father. And, and I don't want nothing to happen to her. I'm just trying to protect the God. Can you just... And he said, yeah, I got out. I'm a, you know what I'm going to do just for you? I'm going to encamp my angels around about her, and I'm going to give my angels charge over her. She'll be all right. Don't, don't you worry. You going to sleep, baby James. She's going to be all right. Or maybe you... Maybe you, you walk through the house and you stump your toe when you go, oh, you know how you stump your toe, and it's hurting so bad. <laughs> Jesus, and that's the first name you call. He said, yeah. he said, yeah. <laughs> it just humors me how he shows up and tells me stuff just instantly because I didn't think, that, I didn't know that was why I was going to say this. But you say Jesus, and in that moment, because you have a relationship with him, he hears you when you call him. <laughs> he hears you. He said, yeah, I'm on the line. He said, hello. Some of you need to say to him, 
Okay, God, I hear her. I get what she's talking about. It makes sense. She broke this down to its lowest common denominator in a way that I could really understand. I didn't know why I needed to be saved. I didn't know well, when, the, the, when they called me to the altar that I should come. I didn't know that it was because it, when, when I thought about, oh, I, I ain't did this wrong and I ain't did that wrong. I, I didn't know that it wasn't about my little wrongness that I could think about. It was the fact that my relationship was separated him from, from my forefathers. The Adam and Eve's sin separated me from you. And then because they sinned, they attached a name to their last name, to them. They didn't have a last name in the beginning. They became Adam and Eve sinners. Now, that's according to the one that ain't now scripture. Just going to show you that. Now, let me say that. But it's like whenever you became your mama's child and your daddy's child, you automatically became their last name, even if... They didn't give it to you. You are that DNA of your dad. So you take his last name. And so because Adam and Eve were the beginning. And they sinned. From that point on, humanity became sinners. It wasn't that lie you told. It wasn't that cookie you stole. You know we done. You know you done. You done got you a piece of candy too. Got somebody jar they won't look it. You know, you know, you know. It won't, it won't that. It, it, it won't that. It won't that fornication. Though that's all wrong. And God ain't pleased with it. It wasn't that. It was the fact that they sinned. And now cause you to be out of fellowship with God. You can't. He can't talk to you. So he can't tell you. I got other resources to help you in this situation. So that you can avoid other things. And there's more. Like, I can't, I'll be here all night trying to tell y'all all of that stuff he's done giving me. Maybe I have to do, shh, don't tell nobody a part two. I say that and then I don't come back out here and do a part two because he don't tell me to do it. So if he don't tell me to do it, I can't do it. But if he tells me, I'll come back and do a part two and tell you what he got to give you. But let's get the first thing straight. If you're, if, if you no longer can hear him, if you're on the phone and, and, he can't get to you and you can't hear him. It's because the call has been dropped. It's because God wants to talk to you. But you're like, hello, hey, hey, God, God, God. And, and he's going, let me get in there. He's going to feel us, feel us. And you're going, God, God. And you can't hear each other because the call was dropped. So some of you. Got to make the choice. And you got to make the choice tonight. You got to settle in your heart tonight. I, I think I, I, I think I want to hear him again. I think I want, I think I want to talk to him, Dewana. And I think I, I think I want him to talk to me. I think I, I think I want that relationship that you're talking about. I think I want to be in a relationship with him. I, I, I understand now that you wasn't calling me, you dirty, stinking Santa. You smoker, you liar, you blasphemy, you fornicator, you home, homosexuality. I, I know. No, that ain't it. It's the sin that, that started this whole thing. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, causing everything. And now you understand it. And now you want it. You feel him. You feel him burning in your heart right now going, I do think I want it. How she know? How she know? How can she tell? She can't she see. <laughs> no, y'all can see me. I can't see y'all. But can she see me? Can she? Do she know what nightgown I'm wearing? How she know? Because God knows. And God said, I didn't send the one of the night for nothing. I didn't make her stay up out of her bed for nothing. I sent her out there because there's some people who want to be back in relationship with me. And she got the key to make that happen tonight. How do I do it? You, you say how? Is that what you're saying today? I ain't even gonna call you out. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make you give me a heart if you believe me. Or give me a heart if you receive what I'm saying. I'm going to tell you what the scripture says, and I'm going to let you decide 
whether or not you should do something to let me know you receive it, okay? The Bible says, over in Romans 10 and 9, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that you should be saved, right? So I read recently the ABCs of it. I was reading this some church that I was looking up, and they had um, this illustration of how they l help the little teeny children accept Christ. And they call it the ABCs. So I want to tell you the ABCs because I read them. The ABCs was A, you have to admit <laughs> that my mom and daddy were Adam and Eve sinners. And I'm a sinner. You have to admit, God, I have sinned. I've been separated from you and my relationship. That's simply all you're doing is saying that I, I've been separated. Then you got to go B. You know, it's A, B, then C, right? You got to believe in your heart that Jesus was wounded for my, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. And the chastisement of my peace was upon him. He died on the cross for me. You got to believe that here. Your mind might can't comprehend it. It's okay. Don't worry about your mind. Your mind will line up at the while. I can't comprehend it here. But there's something in here that says, I believe what she's saying is the truth. And then the C was that you have to confess with your mouth. Now, you could confess by calling me, those who know my number, or you could simply show that you're confessing that I'm a sinner and that I'm accepting Jesus as my Savior by simply sending a heart, if that's what you want to do. No pressure. But let me tell you, whether you do or you don't, the Bible says you have to confess it to the world. So if you don't and you say, I can do this in my home, he know, he's he seen me do it. That's not, no, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. That, that's not the way it works. The way it works is that you have to confess. If you want to call me, shoot me a text and say, the one I, I, I accept it. Send me a private message on Messenger. I don't care. I don't care. Confess it. Confess with your heart. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. That all of this video that the one has sent on Facebook Live tonight, the time that she spent trying to tell me the beginning and the end, all of this, was all because God loves me. And he wants me back in communication. He want to talk to me in the cool of the day. He want to tell me sweet nothing. He want to whisper sweet nothings in my ear. This is where he's at tonight. He want to whisper sweet nothings in your ear. So I said that some of you needed to pick up the call, right? Because the call has been dropped. Others of you, there's a different, unique little place that you in. Y'all have to keep moving because my back, so just pray for me. Your position is different. You've accepted him. Kudos. You are a child of the Most High God. Kudos. Your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Kudos. You are my brother. Hey. You my sister. Peace. Right? But there's still something missing. And you know it. You know it deep within your shana na as People say, or you know it deep within, like something is still, it's just not right. I need to take you back to the mountain. I need to take you back to the mountain. I want to take you back to Genesis, I mean, um, Genesis and tell you the story of Joseph and like bring this all together because I, but it's just, I love how he showed it to me. So I'm not, I'm not because it would be too long. But for you who know that you're missing something. That this, that, that Dewana, this joy that I see you have, I don't have. 
this excitement to really share and be who God has called me to be. I don't know how to do that. Like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Because they, they ain't nothing special about me. They ain't nothing special about me. It's him. It's all him. But I can show you tonight how to receive the grace. So for you who feel like there's just something missing, I'll take you back to the mountain. Come on, follow me back. Let's go back up the mountain. Remember, I told you that according to Matthew 17, on the mountain, he's transfigured, right? He metamorphoses. And he becomes all spirit in front of humanity. In front of three of his disciples, he becomes the fullness of who he is. He radiates the brightness of the Son of God. He is amazing in his splendor. It's just awesome to behold. Puts on his flesh suit, he comes back down the mountain. But when he comes back down the mountain, and he dies on the cross. Prior to his death, he tells the disciples and all who would listen. He said, it's imperative that I go for you. Go. If I don't go, if I don't die on the cross, I can't leave you the Holy Spirit. I can't, I can't not leave you. I can't send you the Holy Spirit. But if I go, I can ask the Father to send you another comforter. But not the comforter in the sense we think. Not a blanket that'll sit on us. No, 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 no. He said a comforter that would be in you. So if I don't die and go up to heaven and sit on the right hand of the Father, I cannot send you the Holy Ghost who will be in you. Who will come to live in you. The power source that Jesus shows on the mountain is the power source that comes to live in us. So when you say to yourself, there's something missing and I, I, there's just something else. I'm, I know I'm saved and I know I love God, but there's just still something else. And you're right. You may be missing his spirit. You may have been saved, baptized, but may have been missing being filled with the Holy Spirit. Or you could have been filled with the Holy Spirit, right? I can't keep getting out this camera frame and showing y'all stuff. But just, just imagine that I have a cup of water and I'm pouring. And so he pours in you his spirit. Some could argue with me on this. Eh. But I believe that God doesn't do things for naught. When he wanted to send a king into the earth, he didn't send him as a king. And all of the Jews was expecting Jesus to come riding on a horse, a full-grown man. They were not expecting a baby to show up in a manger and become the son of God. They weren't expecting it. So when he shows up as a son, it's like, whoa, like, he a baby? He had a grow up? Like, we expect this kingdom to come in his full authority. But his authority comes through a little infant child. So my firm belief, I mean, I have a lot of scriptures to back me up on it, is that when he sends the Holy Spirit, it's a seed. It's a very small seed. It's all-powerful. But it's a, it's a seed. And the reason why I believe that is because there's scriptures that support it. The Bible says, build ye up on your most holy faith. Speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Make a melody in your heart toward the Lord. He says, be ye filled with wine where it's not. He said, be ye not filled with wine where it's in excess, but be filled with the spirit. What? Filled? What? Filled? Filled? So, what? Filled? Wait, I thought when I got him, I was full. Mm-mm. You got a portion of it. But the more you speak to yourself in hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, you're feeling him. You're feeling him more in your temple. He He's getting, it's like, it's like this is the human body. And this is how much 
you start off with him. But the more you spend time with him, see how my finger is going up? The measure keeps going up to the next thing you know. He, you are fully engulfed in him. The you of you is gone because all I see now is him. You spent so much time with him that is all I see is him. Some of you, the, the struggle to be filled is that you don't know that you have him inside of you. You struggle with that. You don't know. You don't know if the Holy Ghost really lives in you or he's showed himself in you through a thing that we call tongues. The Bible, not we don't. I, don't, I want the Holy Ones of old that wrote the Bible, but the Bible calls tongues. And so, though you have that gift of tongues, you're so scared of it, you don't know what to do with it. So, you got it, and you was like, Ooh, you was excited when you got it, and you got it, shout out, Lord, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And the next thing you know, it was like a a, um, a garment in the back of your closet. You ain't pulled it out in a long time. You don't wear it. It's old, dusty, because you didn't know what to do with it. But speaking in your tongues does something to your spirit man it builds him up y'all yeah yeah thank y'all y'all been with me for a long time so either this message is real real good and and god is right on point or you just feel real sorry for me and you think i just don't have nothing to do with my life and y'all want to need to just let her talk but i know that's not why you're here your soul right now is getting some nourishment that God intended for you. That he set aside for you. And you know what I'm saying to you. At either point, I've hit you. Because God himself is using my mouth. It ain't the one. I didn't swing out and punch you. God is using his word to meet you right where you are tonight. So if you could bear with me a little while longer. I won't show you the scripture, but I'll take you to the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, there's this disciple who is named Paul. He's not one of the 12 disciples that is called with Jesus, but he comes along and he follows Jesus' mission. After a while, because at first he was killing up some people. He was killing up the Jews. He was killing up God's agenda. He was killing God's special chosen people. He had figured out how to do it, wherever they were hiding. But I tell you, I got to tell y'all fast because my phone's getting low. He's, he's, he's fully doing it. And he's good at it. He's good at it. He's getting all kind of accolades because he's killing up God people. But on the road called Damascus, God blinds him and he gives him an opportunity to see him. A bright light blinds him. He sees God. The brightness of God. And it blinds him. He instantly, whenever this, I, I, I don't want to leave out stuff, but I'm going to leave out stuff in an effort to, to make it short, right? You have to read the book of Acts for yourself to see those things. But when he turns around, he begins to be one of, one of the greats greats not the greatest but one of the greats that God uses to do kingdom assignment on earth but there's this thing that's interesting about him I just I love it as I read him I, I'm like I don't understand you sir you hiding this story right here you hiding this in this scripture right here, not story, because I don't want to make it, dumb it down by calling the story, because it's the scripture, it's the word of God, it's the illumination of the Father in, in word form, in a book format. Paul tells about how he so wants to go to this church and encourage them. But though he wants to, the Bible says his spirit forbade him. Paul, what you, what you talking about? Who? Who is for? He didn't say no person. He didn't say Elaine KG forbid me. 
He didn't say Phyllis forbid me. He didn't say fresh air forbid me. He said, Holy Spirit forbid me. The Spirit forbid me. Forbade me to go. How, Paul? Like, what? How did the, the Spirit forbade you to do anything? I don't understand. But then further in that chapter, Paul talks about how he speaks in tongue more than us all. He speaks in his spirit language more than us all. What are you saying, Dewana? The more he speaks in his spirit, man. The more he speaks with his spirit language. He is not edifying you. He's not edifying me. But the more he speaks in his spirit language, the more he is building his spirit man up. He building his spirit man up to the point that the spirit itself controlleth Paul. So when, when the spirit say, don't go over there, Paul don't go. Because the spirit said, don't go. When the Paul say, when the spirit say, um, don't forget your mama need her brush. Or when the spirit say, because she didn't know mama need her brush. Get your brush. She gets her brush and she brings it. Because the spirit is the one leading. The Bible says the sons of God are those who are led by his spirit. Led by his spirit. The only way that we can be led by his spirit is we have to be full of his spirit. Because our natural nature, this physical flesh that we wear, and we we decorate it, we put on some earrings for the brothers. We go get us, no, not we, because there ain't no brother, but for your brothers. You go get a fade, put some lines in it, or you may go get you some twists. You may have some nice little twists, or you might have some long dreads, or you might go get you some cornrows. I don't know. For us ladies, we put some, we put a little eyelash on it, you know. We, you, you know, we take a little blush and we put it on. We put a little foundation on. We, we put us some jewelry on. We doctor it up. But the Bible says that this, that we doctor up, that we think is so cute and flawless and fly, is an enmity, is enmity against God. It don't like God. The one I dare you, I love God. God says your flesh don't. <laughs> your flesh don't. And the only way that we could truly love God is to be full of what love God more than we could possibly. His spirit. That's how we become more like him. He had already created us in his image and in his likeness. But by the time you get to the New Testament and then over in Acts, something happens. God decides that I want to redeem those who I have have been dropped on the phone with me. I want to redeem them. I got to bring them in relationship with me. Because once I get them in relationship with me. Then I can change around some other things. I need to now get them to understand. That I want you to be more like me. So in order to be more like me. You got to hang around me. A lot. But how can you hang around God. A lot. You can hang around him a lot. When he comes to live inside of you. You're with him 24. And you become more and more like him because of his spirit living in you. So if you're on here and your call, the call has been dropped, you got to go back to the ABC. You got to admit that you're a sinner, not because you drank, smoked, lied, cuz, decided to be a homosexual, decided to be a lesbian. It, it ain't about that. It's about the Adam and Eve sin in the garden. And because they sinned and they were the first two that started humanity. Everything that was birthed out of them became what they were. They were, they were cut off from having communication with God any longer. And humanity after that became cut off. So God decided that I want to do something to bring all of us back into relationship with him. So he allows his son. To hang his head on the cross and die. So that we can now be back. That cross represents an intersection. That God wants us to make the choice. For the one who is the center of the intersection. Jesus Christ. He wants you to make the choice. 
that I accept him. So A is accepting him. B is believing in that sacrifice that he made on that cross for us. And then C is you got to tell the world. Come on now. Y'all know. This, let's be honest. If you had just, somebody called you up and said, girl, you want a vacation? You'd be on your phone so quick before you know it. You'd be telling everybody because you're so excited. And so God is saying, when you accept it, I want you to shout up from the rooftop. Don't you be ashamed. Don't you be scared. Don't you be shy. Don't you be timid. Because the king of the world sent his son for you. The king of the world sent his son for you. Why would you be ashamed of that? That's love. That is love. In its rarest and its purest form. It is the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son for you. So why would you not confess it? Or you accepted it. You're saved. You were baptized. But you didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost. And it's a simple ask. It is honestly a simple ask. Not ask me because I ain't got it. I, I don't have it. Don't ask me because I don't got it. But the Bible says that if his children ask him for the Holy, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, he would not give you a serpent. If you ask for it, he wouldn't give you something opposite than what you asked for. So when you ask him and you believe in faith that he would give it to you, he gives himself to you. But the problem is that sometimes when he gives it, it's in, a, it's in a baby form. It's in a baby form. So he has to be nurtured. But because you don't feel like, oh, there's nothing. <laughs> it's changed. You don't think he's there. But it's not that he's not there. It's that he's still crying. <laughs> he needs some milk. He needs you to nourish him up. And we nourish him up through... The word of God, singing, speaking to ourselves in psalms and spiritual songs. And we nourish him up by praying in the heavenly language that he has given us. Hope I've hit every one of y'all, wherever you at. Hope I've dotted the I and crossed the T for you. So that you can go to the next level in Christ. Because honestly that. Even what I've said tonight. Though it's been much. And this has been a long life. That is not even. Nowhere near. The fullness. Of all he wants to do in you. This is just the start. I got to get you started first. So that he can take you farther. He just sent me to start you right now. But he wants to take you farther. That your mind can ever fathom. Some people say to me, Dewana, it takes a bold person. You must be real bold, girl. You must really believe in yourself to be online, on Facebook Lives and say, no, 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 no. He's bigger in me than I am in this flesh. He done got so that you don't even see me no more. You just see him. He's done deal so with me that you don't see me no more. You see him. And that's what I hunger for every day. Every day that you don't see me. That you see him. Because of his bright light shines on you. The darkness in your life gotta flee. But it doesn't if you just see me. If you just see the one. And I know I used this as a, the opposite of the illustration earlier. So don't let me confuse you. Because this was the this was the place. And I don't have nothing. I looked around trying to see if I had anything else to show you. But you don't. I don't want you to see me. I don't want you to see me. Because if you see me, you will feel like, Dewana, Dewana, help me. 
and you won't call on the one who was who was who who made me do this live so that you can can say hello and you can hear his voice back. If you see me, you'll feel like there's something special about me and there's nothing. Save the Holy Ghost. Save the Son of God. Save the Father. There's nothing. There's nothing. 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 Don't get it twisted. All that I am is because it's in Him. I live in Him. I move. And in Him, I have my being. If I said anything that remotely connected to your spirit, it's not because I'm so grand or great. It's because He's speaking through me to your heart. It's not me. He wants you to see. No longer I, but Christ that lives inside. He wants to use you to do great exploits for him. That's why you feel like your life ain't been enough. That's why you feel like there's more to me than this. Because he wants to use you to do what eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard and neither entered into the heart of a man the thing God has in store for you, Everett. For you, Elaine K. G. For you, Betty James. For you, Phyllis Simpson. For you, Franchelle. For you, Sherry Hare. And whoever else is on here that I can't see. You got greatness trapped on the inside of you. And God has sent me here today to be the key to unlock your greatness. I got the key in. I'm wiggling it from side to side. It's up to you to release and let me open the door. I got the perfect key. It slid in. But if there's some resistance on your end, because one, you don't want to go through the ABCs, or because you don't want to do what it takes so you don't want to spend time speaking to yourself in, in, in hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in your heart towards the Lord. Or you don't want to use your heavenly language because it don't sound like somebody else's. Or you don't want to use your heavenly language because you're struggling to believe that it is even real. The key won't unlock the door. But if you accept what God has said to you tonight, I promise you, your life won't ever be the same from this day forward. I wish I could give you an award for staying with me through all of my antics, through the lengthiness of this life. I wish I could give you a reward. But if you accept the message you will have received the greatest reward more than money can buy because you will receive the reconnection back to your heavenly father the king of kings and lord of lords the great i am the alpha and omega the beginning and the end you will have received the greatest reward more than i could ever do for you I love you, and I'll pray, and I'm going to end. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Elaine KG, Sherry here, um, Phyllis Simpson, um, Franchelle Fisher, and I thank you for Betty James Whitty. I thank you for their endurance to, to stay with me tonight. They could have been asleep, Lord. They could have been wrapped in their covers. They could have been doing anything else, Lord, tonight, but... Their diligence to stay with me and listen to this message. And hear what the Spirit of the Lord, not Dewana, not Dewana, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to their church, to their, and, and I ain't talking about the church you attend, I'm talking about to your physical house. This church is what I'm talking about, your body. The Bible says it's the temple of the Lord, and he wants to come into the temple. He is ready to come into the temple, and he comes in. By you acknowledging him or you 
filling yourself or building yourself up on your most holy faith. But he's ready to do great exploits with you. So, Father, I thank you for them. I thank you for their endurance. I thank you, Lord God, for their patience. I thank you, Father, for opening their eyes tonight that they will be able to see in a way that they had never seen before. And I thank you, Lord God, that they have a hunger and thirst after righteousness, Lord. That they showed up, Lord God. And you said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst at the righteousness, for they shall be filled. The, uh, just the, the fact that they stayed on this line, God, shows that there's a hunger and thirst at the righteousness, Lord. And you promised that you would fill them. I thank you for pouring into them tonight as they listen to this message. And I thank you, Lord God, that as this message has been poured in their hearts, God, that their lives won't never be the same. It won't never be the same. Because you will be leading and guiding them. God, I thank you. You're an awesome God. Father, I pray that you would strengthen Betty James. I pray that you strengthen her, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you strengthen her where she's weak, Lord God, and you build her up where she is torn down, Lord God. The enemy has came against her, Lord God, in many ways, Lord God. But your word has said that when the enemy comes against us like a flood, that it is the Lord, thy God, that raises a standard. I pray, Lord God, that right now that you would raise a standard against him, Lord. Every weapon that has been formed against Betty James, I declare and decree tonight, will not prosper. Betty James, I don't know what the weapons are. I don't know who the enemy is using. But the Bible that I read says that the weapons won't prosper. I don't care what it is. So the Bible says, lift you up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory will come in. Betty James, I say to you, hold your head up high. Hold your head up. Hold your head up. Because God is coming in. Father, feel this. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Awesome woman of God, beautiful spirit, Lord God. But she still has questions, Father. Deep in her heart, there's still questions that she has, Lord. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would answer every one of them, Lord. And, Lord, I pray that you would do great exploits through her, Lord. Let her, the latter her life. Be greater than the former Lord. Just as much as she has served so many other people, Father, I pray that you would open doors of opportunity for people to serve her back, to respond to her servanthood, Father, in a special way, Lord. Lord God, every mighty man of God, mighty man of God, Bless him, Lord. Use him mightily. He has already said yes to you, Lord. But, Lord, I ask you to begin to open doors that no man can close in his life. There's been some doors, Lord God, that he has yet to access. Father, I'm praying, Lord, that you show him the strategy to open those doors, to unlock them, to walk through them. I pray, Lord God, that you download it in him. That as he begins to pray in his heavenly language and speak to himself in spiritual songs and spiritual hymns, Lord God, as he makes melody in his heart to you, Lord, I pray, Father, that you would download strategies that would show him how to open the doors that you have for him. In the name of Jesus. Lord Sherry, mighty woman of God, mighty woman. God, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that you begin to help her see who she is in you, Lord. Not that she would just hear me say, mighty God, mighty woman of God, but Lord God, that she would receive it, Lord, that she would believe it, Lord, that she would believe it, Lord, that she would know that you love her so much. Father, Pray for Elaine KG. Sometimes, Lord, 
There's something in our heart that knows that we need you, but we struggle with how to find you. The Bible says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But Father, with the scripture saying, seek ye first the kingdom, it gives me the thought that the kingdom is not just in front of my eyes where I can see it. But I have to use something else to find it. There's a longing for her in her heart to know you more, to understand you, to feel you hold her hand through life's journeys, to feel you close to her heart, God. There's a longing Today, Elaine KG, in this message, he has showed you the instruction in order for you to get to him and to navigate closer in your walk with him. Follow the instruction. Because when you follow the instruction, it's like we're all to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Because, 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 because. Because he has everything for me. Because he loves me with an everlasting love. Because he gave his son for me. Follow the instruction. Follow the instruction. Rachel. Wait a minute, let me make sure I'm not saying this right. Um, okay, last but not least, I think, right? Last but not least, Rochelle. You know he love you, girl. You know he love you. It's still kind of hard to understand how he can use you. But if you listen to this whole message, it's lengthy. I'm going to tell you right now. It's lengthy. Don't love me enough to listen to the message. I don't need to. I don't need the views. I really don't. I just. I just get on here to do what you tell me to do. That's, that's it. I don't, I, that's it. <laughs> I see the views, but. But if you go back to the beginning and listen to this whole message, you will start to see how God used this message to orchestrate you into seeing how he wants to use you and how he can use you even in your present day situation I I, I say this and I, I, I didn't really plan on getting on this to tell my um, business <laughs> but but recently and friendship I'm talking to you I, many will hear this but friendship and you need to hear this recently I fell at my job and I fractured my spine. Don't call me on it because I don't like to talk about it. So I'm just serious. <laughs> I can't give God glory if I just keep talking about it. I don't want to talk about it. So, but it did. It did happen. And I've been wearing this brace to help my spine stay in alignment so that my spine can heal. And I'm like three months in. But because of this accident to feel like it broke like because of this accident but it's in my break that I realized something Elaine KG you hear this girl Elaine KG you gotta hear this too it's in my break that I realized something you know what I realized oh my Jesus God didn't break my back, but he allowed my back to be broke in the sense of the spine, the, the vertebrae broke, right? But he allowed it to break for something that I didn't even understand. Friendship, I didn't understand I was missing. He said, D, I want to put more into you. But I can't pour more into you because you're too busy for me right now. Right? Like, I just, like, like, <laughs> I spend time with you, God. I do. I spend, I spend, I spend a lot of time with you. 
but it takes me back to it takes me back to a moment. Um, Everett, I need to talk to you on this one, Everett. Somebody prophesied it to me a long time ago, years and years and years ago. It's probably been over like, um, like 17, 18 years ago. The woman said something to me that puzzled me. Every, I didn't understand it. She said to me, she said, Jesus is pleased. And I was like, yay! But what I do? Because I need to do more of that to keep him pleased. Then she said, but understanding would come from spending time with the Holy Spirit. You hear me, Everett? Spending time with the Holy Spirit. You hear me, Everett? You're spending time with the Holy Spirit. She said time and more time. Time and more time. Time and more time. That's how many times she told me that I needed to spend time with him. That every level of time that I spent with him would require even more for him to pour more into me. So here I go, Francia. Let me bum at you. And I'm doing hair at the salon. And I'm too busy for them. Clients are calling. They need me to do this. And they need me to do that in the third. But I'm too busy for them. And like, hey, G, I get a new job. He let me teach in the community college. And I'm all so excited. But, girl, I'm so busy. I'm knee-deep in lesson plans. And all I'm doing is reading my books and lesson plans. And all about the point. Look, y'all should see all this gray hair that's on the side of my head. But all of that came because I was so busy trying to fulfill all these tasks. And he was letting me be good in it, fresh air. I thought I was doing good, Phyllis. I was flourishing. I was like, yes. Like, even so much so, Phyllis. Phyllis, I had three of my, I, I don't know, I had seven to graduate. I started with ten. Three fell on the wayside. Seven stayed with me to the end. Seven passed my class. All of them seven. I had three go to the state. I haven't, um, at this point, I don't know if anybody else has went to the state because I won't know until they tell me or until the school um, lets me know. But I know I have three. The three that went to the state, my baby! My baby. I was able to, fresh hell. God gave me an awesome opportunity to train my baby in aesthetics, not cosmetology. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Aesthetics. That's taking care of the skin, if you're wondering what it is. That's taking care of the skin. Right? He allows me to teach my baby, to be the instructor to teach my baby. My baby goes to the state and on her first try, passes her state exam, and now she's a licensed esthetician. And y'all, I'm just, I'm like, I'm faking right now. But God, good, y'all, y'all. He good. He good. Right? And then I had two, two, two <laughs> to go to the state, and they passed as well. And I screamed, Hallelujah! I'm still waiting on other folk. I'm still believing God for them. But Elaine, I remember telling one of my clients one day, I said, you know, I almost kind of felt like I needed to whisper so heaven wouldn't hear. I said, I said, I feel like that God has become a second place. Cause I got this job and I got this business and I don't know no more. I love, I love friendship. I love my relationship with God. I absolutely love it, Phyllis. I love Jay, y'all. Y'all know I love Jay. And God told me at the J pass, he said, I want you to love me beyond the love you have. It is, it's a daily, but I want you to love me beyond. I want that place in your heart. I want it. He said, I was jealous when I watched you curl up in the bed at night and sleep for hours with your husband and you didn't have time. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He said, when I watched you stand over and slave for customers doing their hair way over into the wee hours, and when you would come home, you would say, you would say, God know my heart, I'll read tomorrow. He said, when I would watch, you would burn the midnight 
trying to write another lesson plan. And you would talk to me. You would say, God, can you give me, give me, give me another lesson plan. Show me how to teach this lesson. That's all you wanted me to teach. You just wanted me to show you how to do the work that you was doing. But I wanted you to see me. Time is one of time is one of the greatest gift God has given humanity, and in, in that time is what we do with it that bring God glory. Elaine KG, this is personal for you. One night Jay was sick, really sick, and I literally sat on the bed. And I just watched his heart beat. And I just sat there and watched. And I even tried to look to see if I could see the breath come out his mouth. Because if I could see it, he claimed, you know where I'm at, don't you know? I watched to see the breath. Because when I saw that, I would know that my husband, he'll be all right. As long as I could watch his heart beat. So one night. I was doing it. I had done it many times. But I heard the whisper of heaven. And he said, D, you think that if you sit there and watch him, he'll live. He said, but his life will only be found when you find yourself with me. I got out of the bed, Elaine. I got out of the bed. I went and fell on my face and I said, Lord, what you want? And I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And that night I seen God do a miracle. He got up the next effort. He got up the next day and went to work like nothing was wrong. I remember going like this. I was blown. But God said, his life ain't when you watch his heartbeat. His life and when you watch his breath, his life is when you find your life in me. So I had told, I had told one of my clients that I felt like that God was becoming second in my life. And I did not know how to stop this train wreck because for sure he gave me what I wanted. I wanted to teach on a college level. And he gave it to me. But I didn't understand that the gift that he gave to me was going to test my ability to keep him first. So, fresh him. He put me on my back. He put me on my back. He allowed that fracture to be an opening where he could pour more of himself into me. And Sheila, I have been so thankful. Oh my God. For the lonely days in this house. I really have. Honest to goodness, I have. Because it's in the days that everybody leaves to go to work and I'm here that I get to hear him fresh. Oh my God. That I get to hear him. That I get to hear him whisper, I love you, T. I love you more than Jay could ever have the ability to love you. Oh my God. I'm tired of this crying girl. She'd get on, she'd get on it and cry now. She'd get on it and cry. I know. But he's doing something in my heart, Everett. Sherry, he's doing something in my heart that I can't explain. But I love every bit of it. I love every bit of him, me, and me. I love my time.
And I don't know if I ever said amen to the prayer. <laughs> I don't know if I even ever stopped the prayer. Betty James. You saw it. I love myself some Jay. And honest the truth. I still love myself some Jay. And I miss it. Go to Google and put in Google. All of y'all can do this. Put in Google. Say, scripture that says God is a jealous God. And you're going to find that one of his names is jealous. He don't like it when we put anything before him. Not a job, not a house, not our children, not our marriages, not ourselves. He wants all of us. All of you. Why? Because he gave all of his son for you. And how you respond to that love. It's by giving yourself, all of yourself to him. Thank you for watching me throughout this whole video. Forgive me for any bloopers. Forgive me for any scripture that I got wrong. Forgive me for a living on any scripture. But I thank you for listening, not to the one of And now, if you can, because I laid a lot of stuff on you tonight. I did. This was a heavy weight. I know. I know. I know. It was heavy. I'm trying to get you some rest, because he gave us his beloved rest. I love you. Kisses to you all. And thank you for watching. And please, this is not my message. But if it lay on your heart at all to share this message, share this message to as many who need it. Because some people are saying, I go to church, but I just don't understand. I hear the pastor preaching, but I just don't understand. Okay, y'all, that was one of my next door neighbors. <laughs> Miss Elizabeth, she's going on to be with the Lord. God used to have me doing Bible study with her. And when I did, sometimes I would share scriptures and she'd say, but Dewana, I just don't understand. <laughs> I go to church, Dewana, but I just don't understand. God wants people to be able to hear a message and be able to understand what he's saying so that you can see why you need him, so that they can see why they Heaven would greatly appreciate it. And until next time, I love you much. Thank you. And have a good night. I'm going to sleep, y'all. Yeah.